I'm Shahar, this is Spew the Beans, and today I'm going to take you on a journey with a doll maker. Yes, a doll maker. This is not the kind of profession you hear all the time. And I have with me what I consider to be the most known doll maker in the world, Jack Johnston. Jack has built a very sustainable business in doll making. He's also an info marketer. He has over 12 DVDs. He has several books. He's been featured at PBS and he knows what he's talking about. Well, so nice to have you here today. Thank you. I'm delighted to be with you. Yeah. Before we go into the doll making, I would like to know a little bit about you. Well, actually, I go back uh, a long time. <laughs> I'm 70 years old. So I've been at it a long time, but I've learned a lot of things that work in the industry. I've learned a lot of things that don't work. Mm -hmm. And to make my story short, I, I'll go back to my graduation uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Brigham mm -hmm. Young University in 1970. I uh, worked in marketing for 25 years. Oh, I have hope then. Yeah. yeah I mean marketing, maybe I'll move. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I worked in marketing uh, as the Vice President of SeaWorld was my last uh, opportunity and got laid off in 1990 when the first Gulf War came along and uh, you know when that war came along and they laid 125 of us off and it was my division mm -hmm. uh, so I thought ah, I've got to do something I can depend on something I can make a living with and something I might enjoy mm -hmm. so I thought you know why don't I try sculpting I have a degree in fine art right. so let me try it so I sculpted a Santa Claus doll mm -hmm. And it turned out to be acceptable. And I gave my wife wanted it for Christmas. We were out of money that year, and she wanted something I could make for her. So I made the doll. She liked it. Others liked it. And I thought, I believe there's a future here. So I made more. And I started selling them at a simple little craft fair on the corner mm -hmm. and sold everything I took. And I learned two things the week that I took them to the craft fair. One, that yes, there was definitely a market. Two, I learned I was selling them way too cheap. Mm -hmm. I sold the first ones for $129 each. And uh, so then I thought my marketing took over. I thought, I'll write a marketing plan. So I wrote a serious marketing plan. I did the analysis of feasibility of what I could do with the, uh, with the dolls, where it could go, uh, the time element involved in putting it to the marketplace. And, uh, and then I implemented the marketing plan. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, uh, within one year from the day I implemented the marketing plan, uh, I made that year 218 dolls. Mm -hmm. I sold them for eventually $1,000 a piece. Wow. So in the first year, I had a sustainable, uh, successful, relatively successful business. Mm -hmm. uh, PBS picked that up and did a 30-minute special and ran it nationwide and that helped dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, shortly thereafter I did a piece for um, for the Franklin Mint and I did Norman Rockwell. That piece I sold to Franklin Mint for thirty thousand uh, dollars. They in turn made twenty five hundred of them and sold them for twelve hundred and fifty dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. So that's three and a half million dollars. So that put me kind of at the top of the industry uh -huh. real fast. Uh -huh. uh, essentially, it sounds like overnight, but it really took one year. But in one year. It's very short. Yeah, time, yeah. short. Yeah. And so then I found that, oh my word, uh, I'm only one man. I can only do so much. Mm -hmm. So I had to think of other ways. And part of my marketing plan was to write a series of, at the time, videos, mm -hmm. published videos, and to write some books. So I wrote a book. It was very successful, sold out way faster than we anticipated. And so then I wrote a second book. Again, that sold well. Then a third book, that sold even better. And now I'm in the process of writing a fourth book. And, uh, and we are publishing another, uh, we now no longer do videos, we now do DVDs, high definition DVDs. Mm -hmm. And we're doing our 13th one, which I hope is a lucky number. <laughs> we're doing our 13th one uh, in June of mm -hmm. this year. And it's going to be a fun one. It's, it's a total different um, uh, attack. Uh -huh. And we're going out of the box a little bit. Um, I've done character dolls, baby dolls, Santa Claus, historical dolls, portrait dolls. Now we're doing children's playthings, children's oh. uh, uh, allowing children to sculpt. And so we're going to do a little dragon. Uh -huh. And we're going to do uh, some other little toys, a little bear. 
and we're going to have children doing it with us. Mm -hmm. So we think by introducing this child's DVD mm -hmm. that we are going to introduce the marketplace to the grandchildren. Okay. And in some cases, the great grandchildren. Uh -huh. But we need to get the kids involved. Mm -hmm. By getting the kids involved, we now have a whole new generation. Of doll makers. Mm -hmm. You know there are about 500,000 doll makers in the U.S. I started teaching in the first year. The very first year? The very first year. And you were already working with Polymer Clay at that time? Or yeah, okay. Polymer Clay. Okay. I was working with a clay made in Germany at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, PVC, polyvinyl chloride, all of the clay is still PVC. Okay. And I worked with, uh, with that clay, um, uh, Cernet is its brand name. I have no reason not to say that. And it's a good clay, used it for a lot of years. And, uh, but I found that people wanted me to teach. Mm -hmm. So I started teaching uh, uh, literally within the first three months of my business. And that was ultra successful. I had to turn people away. Mm -hmm. I had classes of 24 students each, way too many. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I've cut that way back. Today I, I try to have four to six mm -hmm. max. Mm -hmm. and, and that works fine. An interesting thing happened with the classes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I started teaching every week, all across the nation, and, and within two years around the world. So by the time I'd been in business three to four years, I was teaching in Australia, in Europe, in Asia, uh, South America. I was even invited by the Canadian government to teach uh, at the, uh, in the Arctic Circle. Really? Yeah, and it was really, really fun. I taught seven Inuit tribes leaders, taught the tribe leaders and the elders, and uh, taught them how to sculpt one-of-a-kind dolls, mm -hmm. and did a, something, a new twist for them. They'd been making dolls for a thousand years, the Inuits had, mm -hmm. but they were making them out of ivory, uh, out of seal skin, mm -hmm. out of uh, other fine furs that we can't import to the U.S., mm -hmm. and we can't import ivory anymore. So they had to find a new medium. And so the government said, would you teach them a new medium? So I taught them polymer clay. Wow. So, uh, so ProSculpt Clay, which is our clay, we own that company. ProSculpt Clay became the clay of choice for the Inuits. Uh -huh. And instead of using seal fur, which wasn't admitted in the US, right. we started using uh, faux fur. Mm -hmm. So now, faux fur, polymer clay, and that's the new tradition for the Inuit tribes. In 1993, I had been teaching for three years, and I found that teaching was wonderful, and bringing all these new students were wonderful, mm -hmm. but what was I doing to help them achieve and help them market their product? I found that by establishing a guild mm -hmm. of these people, and the first group were 12, 12 students, one class, they happened to, all, it, it was my professional class. They had had my beginning and my advanced, mm -hmm. then my professional. So they were all at the professional class. I thought this is a great time to start a guild. Mm -hmm. So we formed a guild called the Professional Doll Makers Art Guild. We then, uh, three months after that, we scheduled all of those artists to join us in New York City mm -hmm. at the Toy Fair, largest doll and teddy bear and show and toys in the world. Uh -huh. And so we went there, uh, we set up a booth, it was ultra successful. Uh, I think we sold, um, uh, I would guess in the three days, uh, uh, we must have sold over $250,000 worth of dolls uh, for each one of them. So each person made their money at, the, mm -hmm. at that time. And it worked very, very well, so we continued the guild. Now, when you, you started, and you, this, you were in marketing, and then you started making dolls, family and friends, what was their reaction? Because yeah. it, it's unusual. It's yeah. not like, okay, I went from marketing to be the CEO or something. No, I started making dolls. Yeah. How was that? Yeah, well, it was funny. I have six kids. Uh -huh. And at first, my six kids would say, yeah, my dad was the vice president of SeaWorld. Uh -huh. They felt good about that. Now, the next year. Oh, well, my father makes dolls. <laughs> yeah. Very quiet. He makes I can dolls. See that. Yeah. Yeah. And so then, when I got my first big break, and PBS put it on national news, uh -huh. now my kids say, "Ah, oh, my dad's a—he's a sculptor. He's a world-famous sculptor." <laughs> 
So, and so all of my friends that I raised, that I grew up with in Kansas, I'm a Kansas boy, farm boy, and all of my friends, I had to say to them, I make dolls for a living, but I don't play with them. And so that seemed to be okay. So, yeah, it, it was a different thing, uh, but I don't think of myself as a, as a uh, doll Person, I think of myself as a sculptor. A sculptor yeah. yeah. First and foremost, a sculptor. Secondly, a marketer. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, third, somewhat of a promoter. I promote other people's work. I don't charge for that. I've mm -hmm. never taken a commission from right. anyone. Don't do it. Uh, give my time to the guild. Give my time to the shows. And uh, uh, and I think that comes back to me in spades, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, so. It's a marketing tool. I suspect something like your business is mm -hmm. somewhat of a marketing tool. Yeah. Uh, you don't make a lot of money by putting yourself out in front of people, but you get a lot of exposure. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you can help other people. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. It kind of what, the, the network kind of what it. it's all about. Yeah. So after you, you went all around the world doing classes, uh, tell me a little bit about the business today. Yeah. The things that you're doing. and It's changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, Ten years ago, I might, yeah, 10 years ago, I will go back that far, we had doll shops across America, mm -hmm. thousands of them. There were at least two in every major city in America, and they had porcelain doll shops. And they, they made, taught, and sold porcelain dolls. Mm -hmm. Back in those days, a porcelain doll would sell for $250. Then an a interesting thing happened to the industry, uh, uh, home shopping. Mm -hmm. and the home networks came on, t on television. And when they did, they came to us as artists and they said, we want to sell dolls to the world. Would you be interested? And we said, well, we make one-of-a-kind dolls. We don't make reproductions. Um, you know, it probably isn't for us. Maybe it was a stupid mistake by mm -hmm. not saying, yes, we'll make your dolls for you. Some of our artists did. One of my artists that um, uh, is a dear, dear friend, and I think highly of her, Marie Osman, uh -huh. uh, the entertainer, yes. uh, uh, chose to make dolls for the television industry. Okay. And so she did. Uh, she and, and a, uh, a staff of artists that she had uh, sculpted uh, prototypes. From that, sent them to Asia, made reproductions. Now the reproductions come into the market. I don't blame Marie at all. I mean, Marie is a businesswoman's right. way of making a living. But when those dolls and others, many, many others, hit the marketplace, now they're on television for $49 yes. for a porcelain doll. Uh -huh. Same exact look and, frankly, the same quality mm -hmm. as the ones that were made in the mom and pop shops across America. Mm -hmm. Mom and pop were making them and selling for $250 actually cost to them was around a hundred to hundred and twenty five dollars per doll to make it. Mm -hmm. Now the home networks, the shopping networks on television are able to sell them for forty nine dollars. The artists in America can't even buy yes, the supplies yes, for that yes. so we can't compete. Now we're, we can't compete because the craftsmen who are making them in Asia, first place they're making thousands, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they're paying their craftsmen a dollar an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. know. And, and that's, that's a well-known fact. I'm not, I'm not... In every industry, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. The world is now worldwide, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what was the next way for us to make a living? Well, it obviously wasn't going to be in the mom and pop shops. Right. They have all closed. I don't think... I, I can honestly say I don't... Not one shop in America comes to mind. Hmm. Not one. That's sad. No. But, so what did we do? Well, we said, well, what's next? And next was WWW. <laughs> nice. So we jumped on the bandwagon. So I opened my website uh, probably, oh, uh, well, opened it 15 years ago. It grew, and, and as early as 10 years ago, it grew bigger, and five years or even bigger, and then... Uh, at the peak, it was 2007, at the peak we were doing uh, about a million dollars a year on the internet. Okay. It was magnificent. And then of course the recession came along, <laughs> things, <laughs> went, <laughs> yeah, things went in the toilet. Uh, but 
the internet business because of the nature of that business only costs a few dollars to keep it going. Mm -hmm. So we cut back on our staff like a lot of people did. We went from a staff of eight down to a staff of three. Okay. Uh, we increased our, uh, our exposure on the internet. Uh, we stopped our paper advertising for the most part. We stopped that. Uh, we stopped our direct mail entirely right. and, uh, and went to buying clicks. We did that. Um, I'm sure your audience knows what buying yes, clicks is. Okay. Yes. Uh, we bought clicks. Uh, we uh, found other ways of getting publicity mm -hmm. and to making our website uh, more enjoyable, more informative, easier to use. Mm -hmm. We built our third website just uh, a little over a year ago. And it's a much, much better site. It's very friendly, mm -hmm. easy to use. Uh, it covers everything from our clay, ProSculpt clay, right up to uh, the new trends mm -hmm. in doll making. Uh, ball joint dolls, uh, uh, and of course the polymer dolls, uh, and, and the vinyl dolls. Uh, the Reborn dolls, we're now doing Just that so as huge. well. Yeah. Very popular right now, and it's getting huge. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so that has been our our new success. Mm -hmm. uh, we're finding, and, and, and even though you said the recession took the the uh, revenues down, yeah. it's still in the six figure mark. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Let, yeah, yeah. Let's make that clear. Yes, yeah, yeah. less than it used to be, but it's still very very yeah. healthy. No, we are. We were down at one time forty percent mm -hmm. uh, from our best year in two thousand and seven. We were down forty percent. Uh, now, uh, this last, this very last quarter, up 22%. Mm -hmm. Over, you know, down from the 40, up right. 22. Right. Now, we're still, means we're still down 18. Uh -huh. But way, way livable and manageable. And, and now we're smarter because now we're operating with three people, not eight. Uh -huh. And I operate my business right from this. Yeah. I mean, I... I run the whole business uh -huh. from a 27-inch Mac, yeah. and uh, we have two of them here, and uh, oh, three of them. My son, who does our fulfillment, uh -huh. uh, runs his business just like this, um, and uh, we have a small warehouse where we do our fulfillment. Uh -huh. uh, we ship out probably 40 packages a day, and they go around the world. So most of these packages are either information products like DVDs and, and, and books. A lot, you, you sell a lot of supplies for doll making, yeah. right? And then, of course, dolls. Our okay. biggest sale is our ProSculpt clay. Okay. It's a, it's a business on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, and the books are very important. We sell a lot of books. We sell mostly uh, DVDs. DVDs may be the smartest income producer that anyone in the world has seen in the time of the world. Well, it's so lovely to see somebody else saying that. <laughs> it's a huge thing in your business. Oh, it's yeah. very, very important because yeah. uh, it's a media that people like to consume. They can do yeah. on their own time, right? Yeah. And you're, you're teaching your craft. But look at, okay, now I'm going to let out some inside stuff. It's okay Go, to do that? Please, spill right. the beans. Okay, yeah, spill <laughs> the beans. <laughs> Clever name. All right. Produce a film. Now it may cost five to ten thousand to produce a simple how-to film. Mm -hmm. If you produce an exact, you know, a huge film, it can be millions, mm -hmm. and you can easily spend a hundred thousand on one. <coughs> but you can also do a very nice educational film for under ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. All right, now in in our company, we bought a machine that manufactures them by the hundreds. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so you put in a master DVD, uh, you turn it on, and it it produces DVDs in uh, uh, in quantity, and it puts the photograph right on the DVD. Uh, it builds the case, it prints the label. Uh, we put it together, we ship that baby out. Now here's the inside information, and and I'll probably catch gas for telling this, but. Under the right circumstances, you can make and produce a film at or below $2 a piece. Mm -hmm. Because of the expertise that you're putting into that film and into that DVD, uh, uh, they are gaining knowledge. So they pay for knowledge. Knowledge is power, as you well know. And uh, so they pay for knowledge. So they might pay $49 
for something that cost me two dollars to produce. Mm -hmm. But I have to add one other thing. Two dollars and seventy years of experience. Uh -huh. Yes, of course, of course. So The content has to be really good. Of course. Yeah. So they're paying for value. Mm -hmm. They're paying for an education. But let's say that one of your customers developed a widget. Mm -hmm. it took him three years to develop the widget. But it's really a nice widget. And he wants to produce a little film. He does a little educational film about how to use the widget. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> with luck, he's selling that between $29 and $49 a disc. Mm -hmm. Costs him 2 to $4. And the 10000 to make it. And his three years experience. Yes. But now, all of a sudden, a widget maker has a business. Uh -huh. He has a national wide business, a worldwide business. And he does it all because of the WWW. And the small little cameras uh -huh. that we have. That we have that and, the, yep. and the equipment, the technology that allows us to use our left brain to exaggerate our right brain to get to the marketplace. That's beautiful. I hope so. No, I it think is. So. It is. And, and you know, the, the kind of power we have today as business owners that we didn't have 10 years ago. Yeah. Right? It's just unbelievable. So why sit down and wait for things to come back to normal, which they want, yeah. instead of taking action? And you see, it's a simple process right. that can make you a very healthy business. It can. In good times, uh, we were making seven figures in good times. Mm -hmm. In bad times, six figures. Well, it's, it's a lot more than the average American. Yeah, way more than the average American. Um, and, and I'm doing something I enjoy. Mm -hmm. You know, I look forward to coming to my studio. Yes. I look forward to sculpting. Uh -huh. uh, you know, that's uh, it's a joy. Yeah, it is. Tell me one thing. For people that are interested in entering the doll making world, what kind of size of market do you have there? Because I have, I have to tell you, before I started this as a hobby, I didn't know there was such a thing. I yeah. really thought I could go and buy Barbies, yeah. which I never, never found of. But uh, that's what I understood by that. And yeah. when I got in touch with that, I said, boy, this is amazing. But is it just a bunch of grandmas doing this? Or what kind of size? Of yeah, well, that's you? interesting. The demographics, uh, uh, since you brought it up, are 55 years right. of old, of age and older. Mm -hmm. They are female, $60,000 average income. That's the demographic. It's changing slightly uh, because... The 55-year-old female is saying to her 12-year-old granddaughter, "There's something and to this. Son, yeah, this is fun. Yeah. Now the sons, the grandsons, love it because all of a sudden they can create, and now they're doing, they're doing things that are being seen on television. They're doing characters for animated movies. They're doing characters for educational films. Uh, they're doing uh, for just for regular television." Uh, cartoons, uh -huh. all of these are animated, you know. Yeah. Some so artists. They, they do start with the master Absolutely. that is physical, right? And Absolutely. then it's a scan and there's a whole process, but it starts with the hand. Absolutely. Yeah. So there is a there is a future in, in that for the young people as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Now the collectors, of course there will always be collectors. There are big, big, big numbers. For that. You're at your question to me and I'll answer that. Is there room in the doll industry for more? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to have and uh, I would truly love to have a protege, somebody who could be, uh, could train with me uh -huh. and could learn what I do and let me pass that on. Uh, no, there's room uh -huh. and we need young people. And one of the reasons we're doing the new DVD for the young people. What you're proposing is that really they use a new media yeah. in order to get to the hands, touching things again. Yeah. I, I see the way we are raising our kids right now with a, a grain of concern because too much involvement with technology, mm -hmm. uh, not being able to really touch things, mm -hmm. touch people, mm -hmm. can, can become a huge mm -hmm. issue. Uh, did you have this in, in your mind when you start creating this project or not? Yes, I did and, and here's why. I felt that nothing brings me more satisfaction than tactile mm -hmm. creation. I mean, the creation of a product that comes from a block of clay, block of clay yes. as simple as this, yes. and you end up yeah. with a sculpture as simple as this. 
I don't know if I'll call it simple, but well, yes. But it can be done. Big piece of art, yes. So this then becomes not just an heirloom, mm -hmm. it becomes an expression of your own creation. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be nice if children could now, with their own hands, create something as simple as a little dragon or mm -hmm. as simple as a little teddy bear. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. Get them to start creating and using their hands again. And, and what does this develop? It develops, first, by hand coordination. Yes. It also develops their right brain. Their left brain is going crazy with development because they have computers. Yes. They have technology. They have iPhones, we all carry them, and they're wonderful tools, don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. But what's wrong with going back to using your hands mm -hmm. and using your right brain for a change? Yeah. I think it's important. It's really creating. Yeah, really creating. I think it's important. It's important for us from several, mm -hmm. from several standpoints, but two mainly. One, economically, it's intelligent to right. bring on a new generation. Right, of course. And wouldn't it be nice if, along with my other 12 films and my books, that I leave something for the future? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, mean, I can't live forever. I'm 70 years old, although I'm in extremely good health. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I've got, maybe I've got 20 to, uh, you know, 25 years left. Well, during that time, I want to make a, a difference. I want to mm -hmm. make a dent. And um, I have made a few dents, mm -hmm. but I want to make bigger ones. Yes. And, impact new generation. Yeah, to impact course, new generations. Yeah. Next for me is writing another book okay. and publishing all of my current books into ebooks. Okay. That's the next yeah. strongest thing. Because for me to publish a book now, normal cost to publish a book, you've, you're going to burn through 20,000 bucks. Do you self publish or you have a. I self publish. You self publish. Okay. Yeah. You we actually have our own publishing co company called ProSculpt Publishing Company. And. Um, and we publish for other people, and, and we have found that that's helpful, a little financially lucrative, not really, mm -hmm. more helpful, mm -hmm. but it certainly gets you out in front of yes. people. And once you have a book out in front of people, all of a sudden you become an expert. So I can make your widget guy an expert uh -huh. by publishing a book, and by publishing a DVD, he becomes an expert. Um, I can enhance my business by publishing, but there, are, like I say, there are 20,000 bucks to publish 5,000 books, mm -hmm. and and then you have to market those to the world. But what if for a few dollars, and I mean under a thousand dollars, you publish an ebook? Mm -hmm. Now you put the ebook on the internet and you sell it instead of 49.95, you sell it for 19.95, mm -hmm. and you can have a sale. And you can sell it for eight ninety five and still make money yeah. because it's an ebook. Uh -huh. So that's the future. Yeah, it's nice. <coughs> How about online classes? Online classes are very very good, and and we do them, mm -hmm. and um, and we we have uh, marginal success with them. And I say marginal because I don't have the technology yet to do uh, audio and and video streaming. Okay. The technology is there. We just don't have it. Uh -huh. And so it's one of the things I want to learn and want to, uh, uh, to push. It is, it is doable and it, it doesn't cost a lot. Now, um, tell me if people want to know more about you, yeah. where they can go. Well, there's no better place than artdolls.com. That's a very good domain name. Very, I own that. <laughs> That's yeah. a very good one. Yes. Yeah, I came up with Art Dolls 22 years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. And, uh, and then no one heard the name. Uh, I had heard it. It wasn't my invention. Uh, uh, I heard it from Robert, uh, no, uh, from uh, Bob McKinley, okay. who is a famous artist, one of a kind artist. He is now passed, mm -hmm. deceased. He used the term art dolls and I loved it. And I said, you know, that's really what we do. We create a doll because of the size of it, but yet it's a fine art piece. Mm -hmm. And so let's don't call them dolls. Let's call them art dolls. Everybody seemed to agree. So. Uh, I, I registered the name 22 years ago. I own it today. It's so the name of, of my books all carry okay. that, and my clay all carry, carries that, and so... so it's, you catch it on. Yeah, and I own it on the internet. What are the points that you're looking at to see, okay, this is a good doll maker, this yeah. is not a good... What, what guides that? Yeah, well... Because I believe that also guides the prices they are asking, it does. right? I think it's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. And the simple thing goes back to a marketing thing I learned in college. 
you can make a, a product that you love. You can make a product that your company loves. You can make a product that it seemingly everybody loves. But when it comes down to rubber meets the road, mm -hmm. here's the key. Will the dogs eat it? Yes. So, if you do a sculpture and the, and the public wants it, you're successful. Mm -hmm. If you do a sculpture and nobody wants it, you got to work harder. You're not there yet. Uh -huh. So do something until everybody wants it. When they do, you're Very successful and, and you will make a living at it. Yeah. That's the rule of marketing for everything, right? Everything does matter. You have to figure what your audience yeah. wants what do they want? first in order to be successful. What will they buy? Okay. So artdolls.com. Yeah, art you can get com. to know yeah. more about yeah. Jack Johnson. And yeah. And that's it, right? That's it. <laughs> you know, I enjoyed a lot talking to Jack Johnston. He is an icon in his industry and a very, very savvy entrepreneur. It's amazing what he did. And he understood very early that he had to be also the marketer of her, his business, which you know that many business owners have a hard time with that concept. They think that they just need to be in the business doing whatever is the craft that they are into. But he understood that that's not enough. You also have to be the marketer. He was also able to expand his business. If you pay attention, he mentioned that he has a publishing company. Uh, they manufacture the clay that, that makes all, the, all those dolls. Uh, th there are supplies there. So with, uh, within one niche, he was able to build several businesses inside. So they are kind of parallel to each other, which is really the route to expansion. When we want to expand the business, one of the ways we have is to create other businesses. But when we do that around one concept, one industry becomes a lot easier because we don't lose focus. We understand that industry. So our efforts uh, tend to, to bring a lot more results. Uh, Jack also saw the internet as a possibility and jumped on that and built a multiple six-figure business on the internet alone, uh, which, you know, instead of saying, oh, things the way I do, they're not working anymore, the stores are closing, or the market is changing, just understand that things are changing and you have to do something different and then see where the possibilities are. And you see that he built also very strong information marketing there. He's doing everything right. Uh, I admire him not only as an artist, but as a business owner, because, yeah, you know, he's, he's ahead of his time into taking the possibilities out there. Now he can do more, of course, right? There are multimedia online courses that he can implement. The live streaming he mentioned, he knows. See, he knows that this is one big thing that can improve the business quite a bit. Uh, that's another possibility. <clears throat> And, and, and of course, even going to other languages, right? Targeting people in other countries, why not? Uh, people that are passionate about something like dolls, they, they, they go after products and, and they are always buying and buying and buying. The only thing I would suggest to Jack is to go back to direct mail a little bit with existing customers. You know, a buyer and a happy buyer will always be a buyer of your products and it matters a lot the type of relationship that you create. And of course you can do quite well, uh, you know, increasing the level of trust and everything with the online media. But, but going offline would give you a more controlled environment where they only pay attention to you. Because with online media, they're always paying attention to multiple things at the same time. But other than that, you know, it's an amazing business. It's very inspiring to see uh, him doing all these things and you know this guy we didn't have enough time but he has traveled the whole world teaching his craft and it was just an amazing amazing talk so go back to the interview and see again these things we talked about the multiple businesses targeting one same industry how he jumped from one opportunity to the other how he used PR to build his business so he was pick backing on you know one thing leads to another that leads to another when he mentioned that he was filming his tour through in, in Alaska see how how simple the concept in itself is but people don't take advantage of those moments in their lives and don't forget I'm Shahar with SpewTheBeansTV.com and I hope you join me next time Ooh.